new project on the go today. Again, something else. I'm so lucky in this job because I get so many rare guitars that uh, normally, in normal life, you probably wouldn't get to see or handle. And uh, this is no exception this morning. And I'm going to show you what it is. And it's an SG, but not a regular SG. It's a Greco. So I'd imagine this is something like, I think it's a 63 reissue. It's got the Greco Lyre vibrato system on there, or tremolo as we know it. Uh, really quite a rare guitar from um, what I've garnered on the internet. Again, Japanese built, uh, great guitars. You know I love Japanese guitars. A really nice looking piece here. They fetch really good money, these do. Um, there's one on Reverb at the moment for 700 and something pound in America, so normally it's a decent guide if you, uh, you know, add a couple of hundred quid on for something in Britain, so maybe this is worth a few hundred quid. I'd imagine it's like, a, like I say, a 63 reissue, probably made in the 80s in Japan. Absolutely wonderful guitar. And uh, looking at the frets and the neck, when the, uh, it's got a little bit of fret wear, but nothing to worry about. Uh, when the owner bought this one in, he asked me just to look it over and sort it out for him. So I think all it really needs is a basic setup. So it is what it's going to get. Um, I'm going to clean it up, I'm going to test and check everything. I've never set one of these up before. The string tension pulls the vibrato over. Doesn't look to be a fantastic system, but uh, I'm sure it works okay. Not my, not what, what I'd have on my guitars, but the guitar in itself is an absolutely fine fettle. Strings are already on, I've tightened the tuners up, blah, blah, blah. It's got a serial number. I don't know what that actually means. I've not looked it up. There's a seven digit serial number on the back there, carved in, a bit of paint on there. So it looks, to be a really, really nice guitar. A bit of bow on the neck there, we'll get that sorted out. Strings go in like on the, normally as they do on these type of vibrato affairs. I've read up prefer to be similar to type of vibratos. So how it works is the vibrato will work on the tension of the strings. So I'm gonna crack on with that. I'm gonna give it a setup, uh, give it a once over. I've not checked the frets for level yet, so I'll do that in a moment when I've got the neck straight. And, um, We'll take it from there. Any problems, I'll be back shortly, give you an update. Welcome back. Um, so regarding this Greco SG, I've been and looked up some info on the um, on the internet and I can't find the exact model, but I do know it's in 1979, made in September 79. How I know that is, the serial number. The serial number is a one letter, six number affair. That's not a number one at the front, it's an I. Now the I depicts the month which I being the ninth letter of the alphabet is the ninth month of the year, so that's September. And the first two digits give us the year, so it's a 79, so it's a September 1979. And the other digits give us a production number, 7551, so it's a 7551st guitar made that year by Greco at the Matsumoko plant in Japan. Something pointed out by the owner to me as well, look at the way. This neck is uh, not just glued in, there's two dowels in there, can you see them? You see the remnants of two dials through the lacquer there. So it's dialed in, they stopped doing that shortly after. So we know it's a 79 model. I don't know exactly what model it is, but I do know it's not the 63 reissue now because the owner, Steve, told me um, that the 63 reissue has a, has a half scratch plate and these back wing scratch plates are later, later models. So is it based on a later reissue, maybe a 69? I don't know, I've looked at 69 and it's not the same as that, so it's not that, but it is the same um, pit guard shape as the SS70. So, like I say, I don't know a lot about these. Um, I've talked to Steve, told him that it needs, doesn't need a fret level, but it needs some frets looking at, so we're going to have a full setup with this. He's told me that the electrics are all new, the Seymour Duncans, and they don't need touching or anything, but I check them as a matter of course with a complete setup anyway everything gets checked again. So I will have a cover off, I'll have a look, make sure everything's fine. I'll test the pots for scratching, there won't be any scratching. But I'll still check everything over, because uh, it's, it's part of what I do. I'll check the wiring on the pickups, I'll check the pickups aren't crackling anywhere. Get the height on them sorted out. Um, replacement bridge, as I mentioned, it could be a Tone Pro's that one. I'm not cutting any grooves for the slots here, I'm just going to leave it as I'm just going to position them in the correct position. No need to cut any grooves. Uh, it's got a nice radius on there, flat-ish. Um, so yeah, quite simple, quite a simple job. It will not need a refret, which is good because it's got nibs. And to refret nibs is virtually impossible. 
Well, it's not virtually impossible. We aren't turning to lose a couple of nibs off. We're not touching that. We want to keep the guitar as original as possible. So, end of the day, it's in fine fettle. I've done the setup, done the intonation, done the radius, set the pick, set the string height above the 12 fret. That's all good. Uh, I tend to do the setup before I take because the strings are on it. Now what I'll do is I'll take the strings off and I'll check the neck area. But it, I can see definitely there's a little bit of wear on the neck in certain areas, somewhere on the frets, but nothing that's going to worry me. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the strings off now, take the tremolo off, blah blah blah. Uh, I'll just leave it hanging. Whatever I'm going to do it. Um, and I'm going to have a look at the neck itself. I'm going to get these frets levelled before that need doing. Uh, we're going to um, clean up the uh, fingerboard a little bit. And uh, then we're going to get it all set up again. So that's it. That's all the information I've found on the guitar. It's in fine fettle. It's in great condition. I've no idea what they're worth, but there is a 63 reissue, very similar to this, on Reverb USA for 700 quid. I'd imagine, with one recently sold for 900 quid, I'd imagine this has probably got to be the region. It's got to be worth 700 quid if anyone's money, surely. Japanese made 1979 Greco might even be worth more. Why, why won't these fetch a thousand pounds? You know, uh, there's no reason why they shouldn't. Not my cup of tea, certainly not the tremolo. Um, you know, but end of the day, a really nice looking guitar in really good condition. It's not mint, it's not pristine, but it's solid. So, there you go. A nice guitar to have in your collection all the same. Something you're going to be proud to hang on your wall, something you're certainly going to be proud to gig or play with. Um, really, really nice looking guitar. I will do what I do and I will give it my best uh, attention and uh, we'll get it all sorted out and get it all playing superb and um, get it, get, and first of all, more important than anything, we'll get cracking. Back soon. So we're back with this um, Greco reissue. I didn't realize, or maybe I, I had been told this, but this, it wasn't originally blue, it's been spray blue, it's just originally uh, cherry, I believe. Or, or just natural wood. Anyway, anyway, it looks great. But anyway, let's move on to the um, what needs doing on this. Now, when it first came in, I says, "Oh, we'll just get a basic setup on that 14 inch blah 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 blah." Not realizing or not not logging it in my brain at the time, but it's got a tremolo. I charge 15 pound extra for a tremolo setup because they're long winded and they take more time. You know, whether it be one of these tremolos or a Floyd Rose. Or um, or a uh, fulcrum tremolo on, on a Fender strap, for instance. I charge 15 quid for a tremolo setup on top of the price. But actually, to set up a tremolo on its own, I charge 25 quid. But on a guitar with the setup, I charge 15. So that brings the price up. Now, I went and checked the frets, and when I first checked them, there were four frets rocking, but the neck at the time had some relief in it. Now I've taken the strings off and I've straightened the neck, leveled it out, got it all straight. Using me not straight edge, making sure it's straight, altering ultra and truss rod, making sure it's all straight. But actually, more frets that need attention. There are, in effect, I mean, there are actually 10 frets that have problem areas. Now, some of the areas is only a very, very slight rock, and we could get away with it, but I'm not a, I'm not a get away with it person. It's I'm very thorough in the work I do. So, anyway, Steve's come back, he says, Can't we just get away with a cheaper option? Blah blah blah. I says, Well, yeah, we can if you want. If you want to go with a cheaper option with £40 setup, then I'm going to charge you £15 for setting your tremolo up, and I'm going to have to charge you £6 for each individual fret. Now, with 10 frets here need attention, I could get away with doing five of them. It's still 30 quid, so you've got 30 quid plus 15, 45 plus 40 for the setup, be 85 quid. I said, if you pay for a £70 complete setup, that's all included. It includes your electrics, it includes five frets leveled, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and you get, you get a strip down and rebuild from the bottom up. So that's your best option. Now, then again, by doing that, I've now now I've got to check to the frets, and there are ten with high areas. I shouldn't be doing individual frets on this. There's no way I'd normally do that because once I get above five and six frets needing attention, if I do one fret that needs attention and the two at the side of it don't, once I've altered that one, it's possible the two at the side of it are then going to need attention. So once I get above six frets on a fretboard. Right, once I want to get above five frets, I say, right, it needs a complete fret level. Now, a complete fret level starts at £95, then you've got a setup price on top. Now, a setup price on top is reduced. Like, for instance, I do a £95 uh, fret level and recrown, which takes hours, by the way, 
and including a, a normal setup, I, I charge that's that's including a normal setup. If I want to include an intensive setup on top, I charge hundred and five pound. Now you show me anywhere where you can go and get a complete setup on a guitar, an intensive complete setup with a complete fret level and redress for hundred and five pound. You can't. Uh, and that's really what this guitar should be having. It should be having a ninety-five pound fret level and setup, but it's not. I've quoted a price, so we're sticking with the price. Um, but there are ten frets need attention, and to prove, you see, I like people to know what they're getting for their money when they come to me, and I do what I can to make them spend the least amount of cash as possible. But end of the day, I've got to start running this like a business now because it is a business. You know, and I've got to stop doing myself out of wager. So what I'm going to do is, now I've got the neck level, I'm going to turn the camera onto the guitar. I'm going to go across with Fret Rocker. We know how it works. We check three frets at a time, and if we get a rock, that one in the middle is high. So I'm going to go across the fingerboard and show where we are with this guitar. Not to prove anyone wrong, or not to cause an argument or anything, just for my peace of mind. It's why I video everything, just for my peace of mind. And just to show that how intensive uh, and thorough my setups are. So let's get the camera down there and let's crack on. Right, so I think, yeah, we're pretty good there. We're pretty much central. I'm going to zoom in. There you go. I think we'll do there. Starting what frets one, two, and three. So we're checking this one here, second fret. Listen. Rocking on that side. Rocking in the middle, not rocking on this side. So two areas on that fret need doing. That's one fret. Fret three, fine in the middle, fine on this edge, rocking on that edge. That's two frets out of three so far. Fret four, this edge, fine, middle, rocking, this edge, rocking. That's one, two, that's four frets done. These three need attention. You've got fret five, which Shows up as fine, bit of a rock there, that's just because of fret wear, groove in the fret there. Fret five's alright, fret six, tiny bit of rock, but it's okay. But it's, again, that's grooves in the fret itself. Little bit of rock there, little bit of rock there. So out of the first five frets, five first six frets, five, one, two, three, four need attention. One, two, three, four, five, fret six, one, two, four need attention. Fret seven. Fine. Fret eight. I know it's fine. I've checked all these. Fret nine needs a bit of attention on the outside. In the middle, it's all right. Oh, a little bit of rock there. There you go. So again, another fret. That's five already. Ten is all right. I've checked this already. Fret eleven. I know it needs attention in the middle. I say it don't now. Oh, it is. It's here. Our side edges are alright, both edges are alright. So there you go, we've got 11 frets done. Let's move on to 12. Fine, fine, fine. So 12 frets. We've already got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 frets already need attention. And only maybe slight on some of these areas. Now you got you must understand this fret needs two areas leveling and dressing. Now you must understand when I've dressed that, it's going to bring that down a bit. That could then alter. Ah, uh, this fret is in relation to these two. You see, because that could then be high here. This is why I don't like doing individual frets like I am doing on this. I've already got six up to twelve frets. I've got to do six, and I can tell you now already. There's one, two. There's another four. One doing up here. That's ten frets need doing. Now, then ten frets that need doing. If I alter that one fret, it's going to affect the ones each side. It's where it's why when I get to five frets or more, I like to do the whole lot in one go. So I'm not sure, without doing a fret level, <clears throat> I can get this absolutely bang on. I'm going to have a go, but I don't like doing it. And it's why I should never really quote a price on a guitar until I've got the strings off, until I've got the neck straight, until I've been across with a fret rocker. Now, if you've been a follower of mine for a few years, or since the beginning, you'll know that I always say the most important part of a guitar is the neck. And by the neck, I also mean the frets. And if the neck can't be straightened, and the frets can't be level, then the guitar's no good, it never will be any good, it never can be any good. Unless the neck's right, that's it. Just stop it right there. If your neck's not right, just stop. You've got to get your neck and your frets absolutely right. So anyway, moving on, let's move on to a 12 fret. We've just done 13's all right, we'll check it again. 
that's fine. 14, fine in the middle, rocking at the edge, rocking at the edge. 15, fine at the edge, 16, I mean 15, again, rocking in the middle. Only slight, we could discount that one. There we go. 16 is fine all the way across. I want to check these. 17 is fine all the way across. 18 is fine all the way across. 19 is fine all the way across. I want to check these. 20, just on this edge, I believe. I don't know if you can hear it from there. That's 20. Middle, it's okay. This edge, it's okay. 21 all the way across. Not so much on this edge. Middle. It's almost half a bit half a mil drop from a 21st to a 22nd fret. Listen. So there you go, been across the whole board. The one, two, we can discount one of these. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten frets marked up. One we can discount, so is nine. I think it's this one we can discount. Always a bit of rock there. Tiny bit, it's not really reflective there. So you've got ten frets here. Now the problem with this is when I alter these 10, there's a big gap there, and there's gaps here and there, it's going to affect the ones next to them, unless I'm absolutely thorough and bang on with these. That's why I don't like doing, this should have a fret level by rights, but I'm not going to do a fret level, I'm going to do what I said, I'm going to go across with file and I'm going to get it done. If, for whatever reason, I can't get it absolutely bang on just by addressing these individual frets, I'm going to do a complete fret level with a beam. But otherwise, I'm going to, it's going to end up knackering the guitar up and I'm never going to get it right. So... Let's see where we are. I'm going to stick to the price I've quoted. Um, I'm going to get the guitar right. Uh, but it's getting to the area now where I'm spending too much time on this guitar. Um, so I don't want to be, uh, keep explaining myself on the video. So I'm going to crack on with it and we're going to see how we are. And all things, if we go right, it's going to be absolutely fine. Right, truth be told, I got away with that. Because normally, like I say, when you get above five frets, you don't have a good level in them individually because it, it just sends the next door neighbours out of kilter and you end up then levelling them and you'd go back then it sends you out of kilter and you end up just knackering all the frets up. So I've left the uh, filings on so you can see the frets that have been worked on and you'll see if you check closely, I've actually read 11 not 10, I left the filings on there show which ones have been filed and now they are all level but that's not the end of the job. Um, I've now got to go and recrown them all so I've got to basically get the neck taped up and I've got to go with my crowning file. You see, and when it comes to that, that's two hours working, levelling and crowning there. And, you know, that's cutting into what you're charging for. Not that I'm complaining, you know, but at the end of the day, like I say, this should have had a fret level um, rather than just a setup. Because the idea of me doing setups, doing I'm now doing two setups. I'm doing a player setup and I'm doing an intensive setup. Your player setup should be no more than 90 minutes. Your intensive setup shouldn't really be any more than two hours. I'm already into two hours at this. Well, I will be time I've, time I've done these frets and uh, and uh, recrowned them. I'll be over two hours. You see, and then I've still got to do the setup and I've still got to set up the tremolo. So I'm restructuring the way I charge and price setups. The 40 pound setup's gone completely. I'll explain more about that in a separate video because I don't want to go on about it here. But end of the day, this guitar is going to be done. I've quoted a price. We're going to do a straight 70 quid on this. Even though it's had a lot more work. Um, so lovely guitar. Still fun to work on. And I like to give value for money. So don't get me wrong there. Don't, don't think I'm complaining because I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that, you know, if I tell you something needs doing on a guitar, then it needs doing. And I'm going to be more strict on my pricing structure in future. It's, it's a good job this has come about today because it now makes me think I've got to be more serious about it. Now I'm actually running it as a business. I've got to actually be a businessman. I've got to be strict about it. So I am going to be. And, and doing jobs like this has highlighted the fact that I need to do that and stop being so soft. Um, you know, not that I'm mega soft. It's just like I do love to give good value for money. But end of the day, I'm a craftsman. I'm, I, I'm a skilled worker is what i do is is a skilled job it's not something you can't just go to a guitar and hack bits of metal off the frets unless you know what you're doing you know so i should give myself a bit more credit here and realize that what i do is it's an art form it's a craft and it's not something you can really learn you've got to have an aptitude for it anyway i mean i think my skills my skills are actually fantastic. i know they come from a lot i'm gifted and i know that 
but this is not something that I've had to spend time on years and years on learning. It, it's I've got these gifts inside me. The gifts are in my hands. And I'm just a natural at it. But the thing is, it's either a given gift or you spend many, many years learning it. And, you know, we ought to give ourselves credit. As people that do these things, we should give ourselves a little bit more credit sometimes. I'm probably my biggest... Uh, you know, biggest critic sometimes, and I'm not going to be my critic anymore. I know I'm doing a skilled job, you know. So let's uh, let's let's all you know trust this or, or work along this accordingly. You know, let's all be right about it. So, where am this guitar? Beautiful guitar, and again, nothing out of the ordinary for me. Guitar artists, I do tend to work with higher end or vintage or rare guitars, and there's a reason I get good reviews. Um, it's because I know what I'm doing and I care about what I'm doing. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get it all uh, right in my head. I'm gonna get right online. I'm gonna restructure the way I do things. I think I've, I've come up with a good plan. Um, I've posted something on my Facebook already, and I think it works better for everyone concerned. And you tend to get more of an idea of what you're gonna get as a customer and client. And I can be absolutely straight with you. And what I'm gonna do in future is I'm not gonna quote a price anymore before you bring the guitar I'm going to tell you what it could be and when it gets here I'm not going to say right let's look at this and let's do it that way right, I'm actually not going to give you a price until I've thoroughly checked over the guitar shown you the visit video evidence and said this is what needs doing I'm not going to say this is what I think needs doing I'm going to tell you what needs doing I'm going to tell you how much it costs and I'm going to take it from there so that's it um, it's the best way to do things so where are we with this guitar well like I say I've now got a re crown frets, uh, the 11 I've done. Um, then I'll give them a bit of a polish. I'll uh, treat the fingerboard with some mineral oil. We'll give that a little a bit of a wipe over. Just uh, let, let, so, let the mineral oil soak in for a little while, see if we'll get any. Um, there'll be some grime in there, some finger sweat, and some uh, bit of grime around the fret area. So we'll give that, we'll let that uh, dry. Once that's dry, we'll, we'll wipe it off. We'll give the frets a little bit of a polish, like I say. And um, we'll get the strings on. Uh, and give it a setup. The nut doesn't need any work. I've already checked the string height above the first fret from the nut, absolutely bang on. So we'll do that. We'll tighten up all the nuts and bolts everywhere. We don't have to check the electrics. Um, we'll make sure the tremolo is working right. Um, the intonation already is right. I've already done that. And um, that's going to be it. So rather than, I'm not going to film anything else. Um, there's no point. You know how I, I, I go about crowning uh, frets and stuff like that. There's a bit of wear on some of the frets. This second one here, for instance, see where that black dot is here on that second fret? Up here somewhere, that's because there's a groove in the fingerboard. There's a few grooves in the fingerboards, but nothing that's going to worry me at the moment. Like I say, the filings on there, the ones I've, um, where I've taken material from the top of the fret. This one's had the most material off the 21st fret. It was about a good half mil higher than this one, and that reason is because where the next one glued down, it's sort of bending, it's not straight, it's bending down a little bit. So anyway, we've got all the frets level with each other. Uh, we won't be getting any um, fret buzz anywhere anymore, if we did get any. Um, the guitar's going to play absolutely fine. And I'm going to crack on with it. Back soon. And here we go with the Greco SG. Uh, SG standard. It says S standard on the headstock there. It's got the live vibrato. Don't know what model it is, but it's all done. One thing I did that I wasn't going to do is I did cut little notches in the nylon saddles just to stop the strings moving about because I needed them spaced correctly. Once I've got them spaced correctly, uh, using a, a string spacing rule, uh, this gradually gets less and less as you go along. What you do is you line the outside strings up on two of the notches, then it gives you a notch for where the other strings go. You do it the same on the knot, it does your saddles, it does your knots. So we use that, we've got them all lined up, and I've got them to where they need to be, and I spaced them out, and I cut notches in there, not too deep, um, we've got the guitar set up really nice, a little bit of relief in the neck, we've got the action nice and low. My only complaint with a guitar like this is, is these tremolos, because you're trusting to look a bit there and they don't stay in tune. I wouldn't use a tremolo myself, but the guitar's in tune now, the intonation's all done, the radius is done, neck straight, it's had 11 frets worked on, uh, which I didn't really charge for. Um, I just did a complete setup on it, it's 70 quid. Normally, I would, to be honest, in the future, I won't be doing that. I'd be saying, look, if you want more than five frets doing, you go for a fret level, or I'm not touching it, it's the way it's going to be. But that's it, it's another one out of the way. Uh, it's been a fun project, it's a beautiful looking guitar, I had a great respray. Looked good on anyone's wall, this. I won't gig with it, 
it's a but you know to 1979 Matsumoko Japan Greco uh, absolutely beautiful looker I'm sure the owner is going to be really pleased with it so that's it then that's that project over with it's Saturday afternoon just coming into Saturday afternoon uh, I've got more projects to be getting on with um, so till the next update or the next post as always be good to each other I'll talk to you again soon